Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City. A fusion of politics, commentary, commentary. Entertainment, entertainment, and sports. sports. Steve and his team bring you the latest news and opinion now. 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 Here is Steve Malsberg. Fellow Americans, I'm coming before you tonight about the Korean Airline Massacre, the attack by the Soviet Union against 269 innocent men, women, and children aboard an unarmed Korean passenger plane. This crime against humanity must never be forgotten, here or throughout the world. Let me state as plainly as I can, there was absolutely no justification, either legal or moral, for what the Soviets did. Despite the savagery of their crime, the universal reaction against it, and the evidence of their complicity, the Soviets still refused to tell the truth. But in their conflicting and misleading protestations, the Soviets reveal that, yes, shooting down a plane, even one with hundreds of innocent men, women, children, and babies, is a part of their normal procedure if that plane is in what they claim as their airspace. All right, folks. Wow. What a difference. What a difference. Joining us now is Robert Bud McFarland, a former National Security Advisor to President Reagan. Hello, sir. Hello, Steve. How are you? Good. Great to talk to you. Um, when you uh, hear that out of the uh, mouth of uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, what goes through your mind uh, when you look at the events that uh, occurred yesterday and today? Well, the events in Ukraine should have provoked same kind of shrill and criticism of this savage barbarism that Russia could have prevented, clearly. It's Russian weaponry, Russian training, Russian encouragement of the mil militants in eastern Ukraine. It was outrage without any possible justification. Ought to provoke the sharp criticism and action on the part of Western Europe, NATO, United States, to begin to restore what we had 20 years ago in the way of deterrence and the kind of strength that would have deterred and prevented this kind of outrage. Uh, instead, our president uh, made a 30-second uh, acknowledgement of the downing of the plane in its immediate aftermath uh, during the course of a regularly scheduled event and then flew off to New York for uh, a big fundraiser, 30-something thousand dollar plate fundraiser. Uh, I, you know, far from, far from the actions of, of Ronald Reagan back in, in 1983. Um, would it have meant, more, would, it have, would it have had meaning if Obama mimicked to a certain extent uh, the words of, uh, of Ronald Reagan maybe last night? Well, it would have been at least worthy if he had stayed in the White House and begun to contact our allies in Europe to gain consensus immediately and statements from the collective European Union, from NATO authorities, in short, to demonstrate the solidarity that the West is not going to tolerate this kind of barbarism. Uh, the president should be on top of things like this and engage allies show leadership from the front so that Russia simply doesn't take this as a message that they can encourage this kind of violence with impunity, leadership. That's what's called for here. Well, quite the opposite in, in my view, and I, I'm interested to hear what you have to say. The president today uh, expressing outrage, but also saying that this is a European tragedy citing the uh, flight plan, citing the uh, uh, nationality of those on board. Of course, there was one American, as it turned out, um, and uh, saying that uh, you know, an investigation must occur, ceasefire should occur immediately. But basically, you know, by calling it a, a European tragedy, what, what message does that send? Well, it's the message of someone who simply isn't in touch with the facts. This was an attack upon innocent men, women, and children from throughout the world, Asia, Malaysians, Australians, other Asian countries, plus Europeans and Americans. In short, this was not an isolated something that happened overseas of no consequence to the United States. The rule of law is important. 
It ought to be observed by Russia and every other sovereign nation. There is civilized behavior and there is barbarism. The latter is what we have seen here. It ought to be condemned as such. You, of course, were uh, the architect of, uh, of uh, SDI, and now uh, here we are all these years later, all these decades later, and you're seeing uh, basically a, a former KGB agent who is now, uh, according to a, a Russian expert at the American Enterprise Institute who told us in the previous hour, who sees himself and probably will be president for life of Russia. Um, what it, what, compare the two situations. I mean, obviously, the Soviet Empire is not the Soviet Empire anymore, although Putin might have visions of uh, restoring as much as he can. How much of a danger going forward uh, is Vladimir Putin uh, to his neighbors, to the West, and to this country? Well, he's a, a danger and an increasing one if it's clear that as he carries out acts like this or allows them to happen, there's no response. Going back to early months this year when he moved into Crimea, there ought to have been a signal to us that we need to rally the West. We've been taking a peace dividend for more than 20 years since the end of the Cold War, believing that somehow the menace of people of ambition, ruthless people like Putin, have suddenly gone away. Well, obviously they haven't. But the only way they're deterred is when collective security organizations worthy of the name, like NATO, go back to offering a plausible deterrent. And that's military as well as political unity and economic sanctions. They ought to be a lot tougher than they are right now. But the entire arsenal of counter response from us, political, economic, and military if need be, but a restoring of our forces deployed in Europe, an improvement of those of our NATO allies, in short, evidence that if this happens again, we will respond and do whatever it takes to roll back Soviet attempts to commit aggression against its former constituent countries of the Warsaw Pact. And, and uh, Robert, you know, when you look at the world as it is today and you see some of the European uh, uh, members of NATO cutting uh, the side deals with, uh, with uh, Putin uh, and, and you see the, uh, the President of the United States uh, uh, as they like to say, uh, leading from behind and, uh, and, and, and actually touting uh, the Ukrainian situation prior to this week as an accomplishment. Uh, I guess, you know, ignoring the fact that Crimea was taken and, and, uh, and maybe even saying who cares and saying, well, at least it didn't get worse and, and actually naming it in the State Department briefing one day as a foreign policy achievement. When you look at those things, and I, I, I say militarily, it's pretty obvious there's no stomach for any kind of a military uh, uh, threat to Putin. But what about even the other uh, issues you mentioned, economically and politically? Well, Steve, there is an emerging willingness, a concession, really, from the West, and I mean countries of the European Union and the United States, to accept that somehow Russia is entitled to a buffer zone around its periphery because they have been invaded in the past, going all the way back to Mongols and Napoleon and Hitler. Well, that notion has no plausible basis today. No one can seriously think that there is a threat to Russia from anywhere. Certainly not from the countries of Eastern Europe, Ukraine, and the notion that they need to have a Ukrainian buffer against Germany or other countries of the West is just patent nonsense. They don't face a plausible threat. They don't need buffers when there is no threat. If there were a different condition, then one could reconsider that. But there simply is no basis for this notion that they need a cordon sanitaire all the way around Russia. It's just a notion without foundation, and we shouldn't tolerate it. To the contrary, we ought to show them that this cannot continue. 
the United States is going to lead our NATO allies in restoring the strength needed to deter this kind of behavior. Uh, Robert, it's, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I got to tell you, you know, if, if I came down from Mars and uh, they asked me to determine what you did for a living and what you uh, uh, were renowned for, you got a great, great voice. You always have had it. You still have it. And uh, you sound like a great broadcaster when, when you talk. And I mean that in a positive sense. And it's been an honor talking to you, sir. I hope to speak to you again. Always a pleasure, Steve. Thank you. Take care. Robert Bud McFarlane, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and he speaks the truth, and he knows what he's talking about, because he was there by the side of Ronald Reagan. Uh, you saw the video we played for, for you leading into this segment. And we don't have that anymore. We don't have a president willing to express outrage, willing to say what he wants to say, needs to say. I mean, we had it in Ronald Reagan, obviously. We had it to a certain extent in George W. Bush. We have a disinterested, detached um, president right now, disinterested and detached on almost every single issue, domestic and international, that is plaguing this country and plaguing the world. And when you look at what he's done to the world stage, where the players are now, especially in the Middle East, but you can't forget Putin. I mean, tell Vladimir I'll have more leverage after the election? The reset button in 09 right off the bat? I, I, now, George Bush wasn't 100% on the issue of Russia either. But Vladimir Putin is looking here and he's laughing again. I just shot down through my surrogates, not at my command, a passenger jet and killed 295 people and big deal is what he's saying all right we're coming back folks with fred barnes of the weekly standard talk a little israel and obama don't miss it